I had my goals continually and, and, and always focused on Bathurst. That's where we're on the um, second row of the grid. And uh, we, I have only gone 50 metres in the race and Craig Lowndes and I had a, a straight line tangle with each other and his exhaust pipe cut into my tyre and I instantly had a flat tyre on lap one of the 162 laps. I, I was sort of immediately devastated. I thought, I can't believe this, you know. And anyway, I quickly got over that and uh, nursed it back to the pits without um, damage in the car further. And uh, as you might know, a lot of drivers do damage the car beyond repair with a flat tyre. So I, I calmed myself, drove back cautiously. We put new tyres on and then from every single lap we did that race had to be absolutely flat out. Wondering where Larry Perkins is, of course he had to stop after lap one to change a deflated tyre, put him back to 24th spot, now up to 20th and I can tell you he is lapping at exactly the same time as Jim Richards and a lot faster than some of the people in between. One lap behind, Larry Perkins getting out of the car, Russell Ingle getting into the car. I honestly thought the day was over, like I didn't think from a lap down there was no way Obviously the car was still alright, but there was no way we were going to win it. So, I mean, we were really punishing the car, you know, before before the, uh, that day, before Sunday, Larry was saying, oh, in the endurance race, you've got to take it a bit easy. But after what happened, he just said, look, go for it, just push as hard as you can. And the crew told me, he said, as soon as you get in the car, you push it as hard as you possibly can. There's the seventh place driver in the field, Larry Perkins and uh, Ingle in the uh, Castrol Commodore number 11. Great recovery by them. Uh, they've come from 26th on the first lap after where, their puncture where would this bloke, Where would this bloke be running if he hadn't had the, the, um, the stop after uh, four laps for a quick tyre change? Yes. He's hung in there, bulletproof engineering, Larry Perkins, fantastic co-drive by Russell Engel. I guess the plan is you've got to try and go from where you are to up alongside uh, Glenn Seaton as quickly as you can. Yeah, not wrong about that. Well, Larry, you've put in some amazing performances at Mount Panorama. If you pull this one off, you'll be the Bathurst legend of all legends. Haven't they got some mumbo in a straight line? Look at Larry. Here comes Perkins down the outside of 35, Alan Jones. That's what he's got rid of. Listen to the crowd roar as Perkins comes inside of him, down through Caltex chase. He's up to third position. Perkins is on a flyer. Into Caltex chase, the exit. Boy, has he made this a race and a half. Shades of 93. If you wonder why Seaton's taken off, he knows enough about Larry's engineering prowess. Well, Larry Listen has to had the crowd. A... The majority are Holden fans here. Larry. And they're willing him on as he comes through this turn. He's got mountain straight and he kills. We take Castrol Oil's race cam from the front spoiler of the Castrol Holden. Oh, Back down the he inside. Is. Very, Can very close. To... Must have been a tap there. Had to be. Look here, Larry Perkins really applying the thumb screws. Jones gets out of that corner reasonably quick. Larry filling up the mirrors on the Coke number four. Which way is he going to go down? Down the inside here of Brad Jones. Got him. One more. He's the... driving it to the front. Second spot, 29th to second. What a drive. Can you believe this? More than a lap down. Larry Perkins in second position. He's only got one car ahead of him again. We're heading for a classic fourth hold battle here. And uh, we had to pass every single car in that race to win the race and we did just going to try and time larry perkins pit stop here as you said a very crucial stop uh, looking at being 95 was the first year i uh, ran my own brake calipers i designed and we made them in-house and uh, i worked with the endless uh, company from japan to make brake pads so we could put some brake pads in the car at the start of the race and we didn't want to go near them again and uh, first time bathurst was run without a brake pad change and uh, it certainly caught some of the opposition off guard that uh, yeah, we saved time in the pit stops for obvious reasons, no brake pad chains. Yeah, a good thing to do at the time and um, there's now a rule in place where we have to change brake pads. So uh, we've had another little targeted rule, but uh, I do support the rule. It makes it a more level playing field. And a problem here for Glenn okay, Seaton. He's come out of the corner and the engine is off song in the number 30 Peter Jackson Falcon. And just look how quickly Larry Perkins is gaining. What wretched luck here for Seaton. He's had this one absolutely locked up and Perkins is all over him. Glenn Seaton was the last uh, guy to pass and uh, he was really, uh, uh, had been almost cruising all day and when I got to his tail he decided to go a bit harder and I'm led to believe that he had never ran full revs all day, whereas we'd been running at 7,500 all day and he, he had to up up his performance a bit and uh, his engine wouldn't take him. Broke a valve spring, uh, nine laps to go and we cruised past him and uh, 
you know, he'll probably never forget 1995 either, but uh, in the day, it's a winner and a lot of losers. Can you believe the depths and the heights of human emotion that have been tested here this afternoon? Glenn Seaton so close yet so far. There's Jack, he's almost, Dad's almost home. And the sister, Nicola. Nicola there too. Boy, oh boy, incredible race of changing fortunes. So much drama. What is leading by six and a half hours of mechanical and physical torture. And Perkins, once again, has come for last. The first time, I can't imagine a time in the history of this race never been where done. a guy in last position has won the race. Never been done. When he came in on the first lap, we said, yeah, we knew he was going to fight back and we figured he'd get a top ten finish, but uh, to do it in this order and land up here in the in the front row. Last lap board is being readied for Larry Perkins and they will cheer themselves hoarse for the last two minutes and 15.5 seconds around this circuit for Larry Perkins. Here they go. He won't be happy until he gets up on top of the hill. Gary has still got a car behind him and uh, if anything was to go wrong on the back straight here. Perkins comes around here at the top of the mountains. Larry Perkins and Russell Engel, the great race winners, the Two East 1000 for 1995. Can you still hear us? Yeah, loud and clear. Larry, Mark Osler, would you ever have believed six and a half hours ago you'd be taking the checkers flag? Well, uh, up until uh, we got lapped, I still thought we had a chance. When we got lapped, though, with that pace car business, I thought that we were buggered. Yeah, but Russell did such a tremendous job, though. Even the last lap, I think, was a, something like a 13 and a half, uh, two minutes, 13 and a half, which was an incredibly fast time. And uh, uh, when that checker flag came out, I was mighty happy, I can tell you. That far back, you uh, really don't stand a chance. And, and uh, you know, he, he did a fantastic job. The team obviously did some great pit stops. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Parker!